In this video, I'm gonna show you how to sell prospective clients on using Webflow. And by the end of this video, you should know exactly what you need to say to close the deal. Let's get started. What's going on everybody, Peyton Smith here and welcome back to another video. Now before we dive into this video, I wanna know if you have ever lost a client because they didn't want to use Webflow. So comment down below if you've ever lost a client because of Webflow and if so, what platform was it that your client was preferring or wanted to use over Webflow? So go down below, comment that, and without further ado, let's get into the video. So the first thing that you need to know when it comes to selling clients on using Webflow is don't even make it a thing. It really shouldn't even be a topic of conversation as you're working through the proposal process. Now what I mean by this is when I hire somebody to take care of my lawn, I never ask them what kind of lawnmower they're gonna use, right? I just say, yeah, come cut my yard. If it looks good, I'll pay you and we'll keep you coming every single week. Now, what would sketch me out is if in the process of signing up to get my lawn taken care of, if the person cutting my lawn said, now you may have heard bad things about this lawnmower that I use, but let me explain why that's wrong. And people might have told you that maybe it doesn't cut as well, but let me explain to you why they're wrong and why this is the lawnmower that you should use. Now for me as a bozo when it comes to you know taking care of my yard, I don't care what kind of lawnmower this person's gonna use. However, as a person that doesn't know anything, I'm already feeling a little bit sketched out because he made this a conversation. He brought up a doubt or a concern that I didn't even have to begin with, and now I'm starting to question, well, maybe this guy doesn't use good equipment. Why would he have brought it up if it was not really a concern? And so for you going into the proposal process, meeting these prospective clients, don't even make it a conversation. Now, if they ask, that's another story, but more often than not, you just need to focus more on the features and the benefits of your websites that you build rather than focusing too much on the tools. Because at the end of the day, we know that Webflow gives you everything that you need as a freelancer to do a good job and to deliver a high quality website. And so if your client doesn't wanna talk about the tools, don't even bring them up and don't even make it a thing. One thing that I've noticed a lot in my many years of doing this is that if your prospective client feels confident in you, they're not going to question your tools, they're not gonna question your process, they're not gonna question your team because they feel confident in you that you know what you're doing. And so much of that confidence is going to come in your first several meetings with them and so what you need to do is you need to be very professional and instill that confidence because otherwise they're going to start questioning the tools you use and questioning why you use Webflow and then starting to research other platforms or options. And so don't ever give them that option. Don't ever make them have to do that because you're going to make them feel confident in you as a professional. The next thing that you need to know is actually a sales technique that I used a lot in my job before I started freelancing. And this is a very obvious thing, but sometimes we forget about this. And that is don't bash on the other platforms or the old company that these prospects were using, okay? Nobody wants to be told that they were wrong or that they made a bad decision. And so the worst thing that you can do is go into a call and when they bring it up and they say, oh, in the past, I've liked to use WordPress. You don't wanna dive right in and say, oh, WordPress is garbage, um, there are tons of issues, none of my clients like it, because all you're doing is basically telling this client that they're an idiot and that they made a bad decision the first time. And so don't bash on whatever it was that they were using before they met you. Instead, what you're gonna to wanna to do is find common ground by saying, yeah, totally, you were super smart for using that platform. And especially back then when you had your old website built, that was by far the best option. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set you up with an even better option because since that time, I've noticed with a lot of my clients some concerns that they had and so maybe we can overcome those by using Webflow. Now by doing this, again, you're establishing common ground and you're not gonna make them feel like an idiot. If anything, you're going to make them feel like you and them are on the same team and they're gonna to wanna to do whatever it is that you recommend because you've made them feel good. So now that you've established that common ground is the very obvious part of talking about the benefits of Webflow, okay? Now there are so many benefits to Webflow that I love to bring up with my clients. Some of these are very obvious, but um, we've got the CMS and the editor dashboard, um, ease of use, design flexibility, um, all of these different things have made Webflow a dream come true for all of my clients, especially those switching over from old platforms. 
And so now that you have gone through the process of establishing common ground and uh, making them feel good about their past decisions, you're going to start to sell them on Webflow. Now, don't oversell them, and this is something we're gonna talk about later in this video, but you wanna make sure that you're focusing on the benefits that are going to be very relevant to their situation. And so up to this point in your conversations, the hope is that you have unearthed some of their concerns or pain points about their old website, right? They're coming to you because they need a new website. So obviously that current website is not fulfilling something that they need. It's not fulfilling their goals or helping them accomplish what they're trying to accomplish. And so by unearthing those pain points, you're then gonna know exactly what benefits to focus on. Now, a really great example of this is, um, I just had a recent client who moved over from WordPress. They were a little bit hesitant, but their big concern was anytime they wanted to make an update to their site, they had to reach out to their developer. He charged them like $300 and then it would take him two weeks to update a couple photos. And this was really frustrating for them because it was costing them time and money and it made them feel like their hands were tied and they didn't have control over their own website. And so once I had unearthed these issues that they had, it was really easy to say, this is the thing that you're gonna love about Webflow because once we set up the CMS, you're going to have all the control in the world to update photos, images, products, whatever you need right then and there without waiting for me or having to pay me more every time you need a website update. When you go through this process, you want to have the mentality of a doctor, right? That you're prescribing the proper solution to their issue, but before you do that, you have to listen to whatever it is that they're dealing with, right? You have to listen to their ailments, to um, whatever it is that's making them feel sick, and then you can prescribe the proper benefits or proper medication. So by going through this process, rather than just diving right in and trying to say Webflow is, you know, Webflow is life, do or die, um, you're going to slowly take them through this process and show them how it's going to fit their specific situation. Now, along with this, you're going to want to build a lot of trust with Webflow. And one of the best ways to do this is just sharing client stories or experiences. One of these I just shared with you, but it's going to be really, really beneficial for you to find the clients that you've already serviced that had a great um, experience with you and loved using Webflow and then do your best to get very specific and targeted feedback or reviews or testimonials from those clients because those are going to help kind of relate with these potential clients that have these doubts. And by telling them these stories and sharing these testimonials, it's gonna make it really easy for them to feel like they're not risking anything, right? It's very low risk because clients have already been there, done it, they've used it, and they're happy. And so if you can build trust like this, it's gonna make it much, much easier to get these prospective clients to just um, kind of lay down and say, okay, let's do it, we trust you, it looks like these other clients trust you too, so let's go ahead and do it. Another thing that I found really, really beneficial when it comes to um, past client experiences is finding those one or two clients that just love you, they love working with you, and use them as a reference. This is something that you'll be blown away how many clients are actually willing to do this. If you just reach out and say, hey, you know, I, I hope you've had a great experience working with us. I would love if you'd be available to have the occasional call um, because a lot of times clients will reach out and want a reference. Would you be willing to be a reference for me? And this is something that has made landing new clients super, super easy because anytime they have a doubt, I'll just think, oh, hey, this is a client that was in a very similar situation six months ago. They would be a great person to put in contact with them and serve as a reference. So whatever you can do to build trust and eliminate risk is going to make it much, much easier to get these clients to fall and end up signing up. Now the last thing is one of my favorites because this is something that I have done time and time again, um, both in my current job as a freelance web designer um, and also in past jobs, and that is overselling yourself or overselling a service. Now, if you're trying too hard to sell people on working with you, or more importantly, trying too hard to sell people on using Webflow, it's going to make them uneasy, right? People, they know when they're being sold, and so don't be salesy. People have that built-in BS radar where they know when you're trying too hard to convince them of something. So instead, what you're gonna wanna do, very similar to the first thing that we talked about in this video, don't make it a thing, right? Just make it you know, chill, be chill, don't, uh, don't overstress it, don't uh, try to talk about too many benefits or try to um, compare Webflow to too many different platforms. Instead, you just need to act confident, right? Don't oversell it, 
tell them exactly why they're going to like Webflow, exactly how it's going to solve their concerns or their issues and how it's gonna help them reach their goals and then move on to something else. Don't get stuck on it. Don't feel like you have to wait for them to say, okay, let's use Webflow in order to proceed with the conversation. Instead, when it comes up, you're going to, again, establish common ground with them, share with them the benefits of Webflow, and then you're gonna move right on to something else, whether that's pricing or their SEO campaign or whatever else it is that you need to take them through in order to get them to sign, okay? So remember, don't oversell it. Now, after all this is said and done, there's still the very important part of delivering on your promises. And this is something that I wanna iterate over and over and over again with you is, you need to be good enough with Webflow that you can actually deliver a product that they're going to love, right? I'm not teaching you this so you can con people into hiring you and then do a crappy job for them. But instead, you need to make sure that you are very proficient with Webflow. You actually know how to utilize those features and benefits of Webflow to the benefit of your client. And so if you're not feeling confident in Webflow right now, that's okay. You can still take on clients. You're not going to be able to command a premium for your services right now, but you've got to start somewhere. And so if you wanna learn more about how to get more proficient with Webflow and how to prepare yourself in order to deliver great sites to your clients, you can click this video up above. This is one of the most comprehensive Webflow tutorials out there. Within 45 minutes, you're gonna be a Webflow pro and you're going to be able to more confidently sell your clients on using Webflow. Also, if you liked this video, please let me know and go ahead and click the like button down below. It really helps me out and it allows me to know exactly what videos you guys are liking. So thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.